Today's front runner is Steve Laracuente. Steve has been a good friend of mine for years and we are so happy to have him here. He is the Student Services Coordinator at the Hawaii Center for the Deaf and the Blind. I first met you, Steve, 10 years ago. You were a teacher at Pearl City High School at that time, mm -hmm. the only deaf teacher in the state of Hawaii. That's correct. And I remember being impressed with how much the students loved you. We're honored to have you here. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. We were wondering if perhaps we could begin by having you share a little bit about your own growing up and perhaps when role models first started to make a difference in your life. Okay. Um, role models started to make a difference in my life kind of late um, when I was 21 years old and decided to get involved with the deaf community. Prior to that, um, the way I was raised was orally and my mom taught me not to be involved with the deaf community. Um, almost the same idea as uh, children of a lesser god. Um, you don't want to be involved with those kind of people, deaf people who sign. Um, but I never felt that way. Um, I always wanted, I was always curious about them and curious about myself, really. What does it mean to become deaf for me? Does it mean I'm one of the so-called children of a lesser god myself and I'm a lesser person? I didn't think that, so I got involved and have no regrets since. Yeah, do, do you find that um, children growing up these days are, are having the same kind of uh, teaching? That, that they feel that they're less than others? Yes, yes. Mm. And that's why it's really important for me to be a role model and let them know that it's okay. It's okay to be deaf. In fact, there are many, many reasons why you can be proud that you're deaf. And you can teach your family about that too. To let them know too not to be ashamed of you as a deaf child. Mm -hmm. Now, when you went to university, you were explaining to me that you were trying to lip read. At that time, there were no supports for you. You were Right, right. Um, I, I was completely uh, ignorant about my rights and um, didn't know I could ask for an interpreter or even note taker. So I was trying to lip read the professors in a big uh, lecture hall, uh, maybe 150, 200 students by myself, and write my own notes and lip read at the same time. And uh, very often, I think every, every day, I would have a headache, big one, and then try to do homework <laughs> <laughs> overnight <laughs> at the same time. Steve, when did you first start meeting deaf people that you found yourself modeling after and thinking, gee, Here's a whole world of culture that I want to learn about. And um, it's almost immediately after um, I began failing my classes at college, God. because it was becoming too overwhelming to do it all by myself. And I failed four classes out of five. And then I went to counseling, and the counselor asked me, do you ever hear of uh, NTID or Gallaudet? I said, no, what's that? And he told me that those are two good, excellent programs for the deaf at the college level. Role modeling, when I asked you if you would come to our program, you said something like, that's why I'm here, role modeling. And I think you've also told me that you expect deaf young people to know that they are to be role models for. Yes. Would you tell us a little more, what, why is this so important? Um, because it was important for me. Um, growing up, I had no clue um, what to do, how to behave as a deaf person. Um, so I tried to behave like a hearing person, because that was the only thing I knew growing up. That was the only role model that I had growing up. Um, but as I lost more hearing um, and became legally deaf, um, it was harder for me to interact with the hearing people. And it was becoming actually frustrating. I was withdrawing, and I needed the human contact. And with young people at your school today, 
why do you impress on them the responsibility of being a role model? Because there's always someone, you may think you're a big fish, but there's always a smaller fish that's watching what you're doing, and it's going to learn from what you're doing. Regardless if you're a high school student, there's a middle school student watching you. At our school, we have all the grades, preschool through high school, together on one campus. So all the little ones are watching all the bigger ones on up. So a third grader is a role model for a kindergarten student. And what would you say to parents and teachers of deaf students who are attending the community schools in our state where there really are not many other deaf students? Mm -hmm. Please get involved with the uh, deaf community. You will not regret it. Catherine, you want to have a chance, friend? Yeah. Um, <coughs> deaf students growing up um, have many experiences in their life. And what, what, what technology was useful for you, and what technology do you think might be useful for uh, other deaf students? Mm -hmm. Um, nowadays there's so much, um, even right now, I have <laughs> two pages, that are not mine, they're from work. Um, other staff needs to contact me, emergency, um, uh, meeting in the office, whatever they need me for. Now, they can contact me two ways, two pages. Um, I have a TTY I use for making phone calls, important business phone calls relating to student business um, to provide student services. You have the TTY, you have beepers. Yes. You also enjoy television and want your students to be yes. able to? With closed caption because I can't understand the TV without closed caption. Uh, safety devices. Yes. It's important that young people be as independent as possible? At home and in the school. We have a fire alarm lights, strobe light that go off on the whole campus. Um, even outside, too, you can still see the light flashing outside as well. Mm -hmm. um, we have um, every classroom has a push button that doesn't bring a bell. It flashes a light. Is that so for people safety? People know someone's at the door. Oh, oh that's okay. a doorbell or a door light. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, S Steve, you will visit young people at home. Yes. You want their parents to also meet you, and you try to what? Teach uh, them about um, how they can make life better for their children. Um, doorbell lights, um, telephone lights so that the children will know that the phone is ringing, um, how they can get a TTY for only $6 a month as a rental. And if by accident the TTY is broken, it will be exchanged with no common. Mm. Now, do you encourage parents and friends of deaf children to learn sign language? Yes. That is important? Yes, very important. Um, very often I've been asked by the students themselves if do my parents love me? And I said, yes, of course they do. And then they, I asked them, why do you ask me that question? And they say, well, because my family never learned to communicate with me. How do you respond to them then? Well, I, I can explain to them that there are opportunities for the family to learn signs. Um, there is an ASL family class available mm -hmm. for the whole family. Grandma, grandpa, aunties, uncle, the little baby sister or brother can come to, and the whole family can learn how to sign in ASL and improve communication within the whole family, really. It sounds like it's a lot of um uh, attitude or perspective that that needs to shift in order for people who are deaf to to be yes. fully included in their home and, and schools still that shift needs to happen mm -hmm. that is going to take a long time yeah um, usually people um, when they find out I'm deaf they say oh I'm sorry but um, 
I don't want people to be sorry. I just want them to be aware that I'm deaf, that mm -hmm. if you want to communicate with me, you need to face me and speak clearly, not over-exaggerated mouth yeah. or facial expression or too much gestures. Um. Steve, one of the concerns in our society that I have heard is that if we encourage deaf youth to join deaf communities, they will be further distanced from the hearing community. That instead of building one world, it may be contributing to two worlds. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you respond to that? Um, I had a similar question from a Board of Education member who asked me, how is the deaf school preparing the student for the hearing world, yeah. quote unquote. And I told them about my own experience, how I grew up orally, and I was, quote, successful because I could speak, lip read, use the hearing aid. But I told them that I was not ready for the hearing world because I wanted to hide my disability. I was ashamed. I didn't want people to know I was deaf. But if I'm brought up in a deaf school where people sign, and I have pride in who I am, and I want to inform people about who I am and what my needs are, then I'm better off and prepared for the hearing world. Yeah. On that note, I think we need to wrap up. Thank you very much, Steve. We well, really appreciate your being here. You're welcome. I think you're a great role model. And oh, as, thank a, you. Thank you. as a hearing person, I feel more included when you respect your mm -hmm. own deaf culture, too. I, have, I didn't, I, I'm with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.